Hello, my wonderful viewers. Today we're going to tackle an argument that creationists and intelligent design, or ID, proponents have been waving for a number of years. The inability of the flagellum to evolve. But before we get into all the dirty details, I have a disclaimer. There is no such thing as the flagellum. In the same way that I pointed out in my video, The Scientific Method, that there is no single scientific method, similarly, there is no single flagellum. There is a vast range of different flagella. A bacterium could arrange a single flagellum at one end, called monotrichus. Or there could be one flagellum on each end of the bacterium, called amphitrichus. Or several flagella could be clustered together on one end, called lophotrichus. Or the flagella could be distributed all about the bacterium, called paratrichus. Each domain also has its own type of flagella. Bacteria have peptidoglycan in their cell walls, so bacterial flagella must be built to accommodate this. Archaeal flagella are called archaella and have quite a few differences from bacterial flagella. For example, archaella are powered by ATP, while bacterial flagella are powered by hydrogen ions. Archaella grow by adding subunits to the base, while bacterial flagella grow by adding them to the top. Bacterial flagella are thicker than archaeella, etc. Lastly, eukaryotic flagella are composed of microtubules. Now, creationists and ID proponents like the flagellum because they believe, erroneously I might add, that it is an irreducibly complex structure. Irreducible complexity is the idea that a structure cannot be reduced to its constituent parts and remain functional. Anti-evolutionists would argue that the flagellum, in any form, could not be functional if it evolved step-by-step step through evolution. ID proponent Michael Behe even argued this in the 2005 Dover trial, where ID was being evaluated for its constitutionality. As it happens, the court ruled, thanks to the efforts of biologist Kenneth Miller and numerous bacteriologists, that ID couldn't be taught in public schools because it wasn't science, but religion. Now, what about the evolution of the flagellum itself? Well, in bacteria, the flagellum is ultimately derived from a type 3 secretion system, which is an appendage that allows bacteria to secrete proteins. In archaeans, the flagellum shares many similarities with the type 4 pili, and pili are hair-like appendages found on many bacteria. Third, for eukaryotes, it would appear that the most recent common ancestor of all eukaryotes already had a flagellum, which spread throughout the domain. So, research concerning the evolutionary history of the flagellum has focused primarily on bacteria. However, this has fortunately revealed a step-by-step -step evolution of the molecular structure. The 2007 paper, Stepwise Formation of the Bacterial Flagellar System, meticulously documents how a flagellum could arise from a series of gene duplications and simple modifications, and points out, quote, Comparisons of the complete genome sequences of flagellated bacteria reveal that the flagellum is based on an ancestral set of 24 core genes for which homologues are present in genomes of all bacterial phyla. The most striking finding from our analysis is that these core genes originated from one another through a series of duplications, an inference based on the fact that they still retain significant sequence homology." Close quote. In other words, the whole flagellum could ultimately be based on a single, repeatedly duplicated gene. If you want a visual representation of this process, then see Tony Reed's How Creationism Taught Me Real Science 33, Bacterial Flagellum. I highly recommend it. Moving on, experiments have revealed that mutating flagella can have significant effects. The 2007 paper, The Protein Network of Bacterial Motility, removed a number of proteins from the flagella of different species of bacteria and showed that this only reduces motility in certain cases, which already implodes the notion of irreducible complexity. 
And in the 2017 paper, Novel Genes Associated with Enhanced Motility of Escherichia coli, ST131, researchers saw that certain mutations in the E. coli gene EC958 actually increased the motility of their flagellum. So we see that, through and through, the flagellum isn't irreducibly complex. Flagella can very capably evolve from pre-existent structures. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.